All right, hello, pre-calculus class. As you can see, I'm not in the classroom today. I'm at the beautiful Vasona Park. And I'm here because I want to record second level graphic calculator techniques and tools that you'll need to use uh, this year for sure, past beyond what I showed you in the basic video. Now you can see that in the I've been doing a lot of uh, stuff inside the uh, lecture videos on edge creations, the screencasts. So this is just going to be some stuff that I don't have time to get to in those videos. Um, just really important stuff that you'll use all the time that I won't have time to explain every time you use it. So let's start with some more graphing stuff. Let's say, you know, we go to y equals to graph. Let's say I wanted to graph 8x squared. Okay, you can see what buttons I pressed. 8x squared. You can see my finger's doing a little better. Now if I, uh, let's subtract 4 from that, because we can. I'll put that in the sun so you can see it and graph. You know, there it is. Now let's say I wanted to see what Y values were mapped to every single X value. How do I do that? I press second graph, and it's called the table. And what it's showing me is, and I can scroll up and down this thing with the arrows, it shows me what Y value you there is for each x value. Now, what if I wanted 0 0.5 or something like that? Well, I could go and set up my table by pressing second window. And it says right now the table is going to start at negative 5 and it's going to increase by 1 each time we have a new x value. So if I want to change that, I certainly can. Let's say I want to see every 0.4 or every point one values so I could do that and if you would like I would never uh, recommend changing the dependent setting but you could also have it ask and so if I press ask it will allow me to input the value for the uh, input variable and then I could check it so let's go back to the table now you see there's nothing there because I've had it press ask so if I press it for it's going to give me enter. It's going to tell me what the value is for 4. Or I could put in negative 0.2. And it's going to tell me what that value is. It's a pretty powerful tool. Now, if I change the independent back to auto, scroll down so your highlighter's on it, press enter. Now it's on auto. If I go back to the table, second graph, now it's just increasing. Oops, excuse me. Don't press that button. If you ever get, if you ever press one of these buttons and you're like, what the heck am I? Just press second mode and you'll quit. Second graph is what I meant to, to put. See here, now I've got all the values that I could ever want in the tenths, every point one. So if you want to get as fine tuned as you want and look at very specific values, you could do that with this calculator. It's very neat. And there's sometimes when you're going to have to use a table feature of a graphing utility, that's what it will say and that's how you access this, okay? If I were to graph more than one thing, like three times the square root of x, I'm gonna close that parenthesis, I'd have two graphs, of course. Okay, there's the other one. And if I press second table, it's gonna show me two y values of course for the square root of x, you can't plug in negative numbers. It's going to increment by the same amount I have the table set at now when you add new graphs. As you can see, I've seen the y values for multiple graphs. And it, if I had more, if I had graphed more things, I'd press the arrow and I'd be able to see them. All the y values for each x value. It's a pretty powerful tool. Now, let's get out of here. Second quit. I want to show you how to graph sine and cosine functions properly because there is a science to it, I'm trying to get in the sun. And you do want your window to be what it needs to be. The sine, cosine, all those trigonometric functions you can find right here. And you see their inverses, which we haven't really gotten into yet, but you will, are right there. The seconds for those buttons. So let's say I wanted to graph sine of x. Okay, so get rid of these, clear it out, each row. 
you write sine of x. And then, oops, not second. If you ever press the second button and you didn't mean to, just press the second button again and you'll see that little arrow goes away. Just press graph. There's the sine function. Now, how did it know to put those tick marks at the important spaces for the sine function, which are 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi. So it's going up by pi over 2. Well, here's what I would do to make it do that. I already said it like that. But let's say it was on a normal standard zoom. You'd write zoom 6. So here's the standard zoom. You can see the tick marks don't really line up with the important places on the sine function. It's peaks and where it crosses the x-axis. So, how do we remedy that? We press zoom, and you see down here zoom trig? You press that. Zoom 7. Now the x-axis values will increment by pi over 2, which is what the uh, sine, cosine, tangent functions and all that really need. Okay, so that's what the sine function looks like. Now I can mess with this function. Of course, I don't, I'm not just limited to sine of x. I can plug in all kinds of stuff. I can add 3 to it. And there it is up there. Remember, I'm still zoom 7. It will continue to look like that. It's not going to match whatever sine function I plugged in. It's going to match its pre-loaded pre values that it needs to be. I'm going to go back here and I can multiply x by something. Now if you've got this all set up, but you want to put something near the x, you don't want to erase everything you have, press second delete, and that's the insert. You see how it's blinking now? Watch what happens when I press the number 5. It's going to put a 5 in front of that x. Now if I ever want to delete something, I just press del right there and now the X is gone. So that's how that works. And parentheses graph. And you'll learn in the, in, the, in the lessons coming up why this happens when you multiply the input by 5. But uh, for now, that's just to show you that you can have different types of sine functions. Here I'll graph a cosine function for you right next to it and I'll use, got the arrows over here, I'll press enter if you get a nice thick line alright we'll go back here and we'll do cosine of half or point 0.6 we'll do point 0.8 that's fine point 0.8x in parentheses minus 1 just to show you how powerful this thing is I'll grab both of these it's already going to keep the sine function but before now you see that cosine function has been graphed right alongside it. It can make some really cool designs, but it's, it's the math that's really powerful. And so that's how we graph sine and cosine functions. And tangent, let's see what tangent looks like. I'll get rid of both of these because I have to teach you about something new before we end this video. Tangent. So there's tangent. It's very hard to see because the sun. This is the iPad too, so it's. I'm just gonna put it right here. You can see it better. Tangent. Let's do tangent of just regular old x. Okay. And let's press graph. Look at that! Wow. What are those lines? Tangent are those curvy lines, and it's periodic and you'll again learn about that in the lesson but these vertical lines throughout the the graph are asymptotes they're called asymptotes a s y m t o t e s they're areas where the tangent function is undefined and specific x values and if i were to press a table for this feature watch what happens second graph now if I plug in, let's go back to table set, and let's uh, start at zero, 
and let's increment by pi pi over 2. And that's you now it's graphing it because I accidentally pressed just regular graph. Second graph. See those places where it's error? That's every um, other pi over 2. That's because it's undefined there. If you ever see an error in the y value for a function, it's undefined there. So that, that x value is not a part of its domain. So that's what they look like. All right, guys. I hope that this helps you with some table features and graph graphing of trig functions. And I'll see you next time. Goodbye.